Okay, so welcome to our personally sponsored coach team hangout tonight. It's September the 8th already. I cannot even believe it. And um, I will scoot back so you can see all of my head as I'm talking here. And I'm just excited tonight to tell you a little bit more of my story. I know that some of you have bits and pieces and um, I just know that I've been sharing my story with so many other teams and so many other coaches and Nikki Wasik, Nicole Wasik, where um, I know her as Nikki Wasik, he, he was telling me, she said, Erin, I don't think our coaches know this about you, you know? And so um, I thought that was interesting because I know that um, I used to kind of tell my story all the time. And now I, um, I don't know. I think I just kind of, it's like we forget what Shakeology tastes like the first time we tried it. You know, we just kind of take things for granted. We um, find our favorite recipe and we make the same thing every day. You know, I found what worked for me and, and then I do that over and over again. And so I think maybe um, it might just be helpful for, to, for me to remind you guys a little bit more about me. And I'm, so tonight's going to be more inspirational. Um, I'll share with you a few nuts and bolts here in a moment, just so that we're all on the same page. So, um, but I think that I hope to share some words of advice with you that's really going to maybe connect with you personally and to your heart tonight. Um, I am kind of trying to, in my head, prepare for a speaking engagement I have coming up. And some of you heard um, Arno um, share with me the invitation to speak at the Beachbody Leadership Retreat, which is coming up in less than a month. It's in October. Um, which is just an amazing opportunity. I mean, like still saying that out loud, I'm like, wow, that's me. Because I'm going to be speaking to the people who inspire me. And I'm asked to do that. So it just kind of, it just is very surreal. And I'm not exactly sure um, what I'm supposed to talk about yet. We're kind of determining that. Story, but I know that it has a lot to do with, you know, my story. Um, I think that, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to... Yeah, mute Michelle. Okay, so, but before I do that, I have something in my, okay, so before I do that, I do just want to share a few things coming up. If you did not listen to our team hangout that was last week, it is recorded on YouTube and the link has been posted to the Fit Fighter Nation page. If you're a newer coach and you're kind of just getting into this, um, you will notice that there is a files tab on all the Facebook pages or groups that you're a part of. And one of the files that I keep editing and renewing or whatever um, is a file with all of our recorded team calls and the links to those. So you can find all of our recorded calls on that document on the Fit Fighter Nation page. So that's important because I really do talk about the launch of Masters Hammer and Chisel and all this talk about beauty and the beast and what that means. So um, I think this is huge. I'm, I've created and started this whole launch up to Masters Hammer and Chisel, which is the program that I'm a part of the test group. And we just finished day 30 today. And I want so badly to show you pictures and to tell you pounds and inches and that kind of thing, but I can't do it. And it's so hard not to share those things. I did send my mom the picture. I was like, I'm sending this to you because I have to share it with somebody, but you can't share it with anybody else. Um, so it's kind of fun. Um, the thing that has changed me is that I have 100% fully committed to my fitness and my nutrition. And I haven't done that in a very, very long time. And that has reignited a spark in me, in my business, in my personal life. It has made inviting so easy. It's made sharing on Facebook so easy. It's made coaching my challenger so much easier because I'm 100% invested in my journey. And I do think, and so that for me, I want you to take my lead on that. And so I created this whole momentum called Beauty and the Beast, this whole, whole launch process. I think that everyone here will love and benefit from Masters Hammer and Chisel when it comes out. I think all the people that you work with are going to love it and they're going to see incredible changes in 30 days. It's a 60 day program. They're going to see incredible changes. I think that a lot, of, we are going to meet a lot of new people with this program. And so I want us to be ready 
So I want us to know Autumn's programs. I want us to know Sagi's programs. I'm kind of inviting you to immerse yourself in your own challenge and be part of your own journey 100%. And um, by committing to the 21 day fix, the extreme body beast or a hybrid of extreme and body beast. And that's what beauty and the beast is. I'm going to start a new four week long challenge in September, October, November, and December. Before all those begin, I'm going to be leading free challenges and things like that. I'm inviting you to do two things. Number one, be a participant in my beauty and the beast challenge group and commit yourself. Let me be your personal coach again. Okay. I was at one point. Let me do it again. Come back into my challenge group and be 100% all in. Commit. And number two, to lead your own Beauty and the Beast challenge group. At some point, you don't have to September, but you definitely need to get on it at some point. Um, because you're like, well, wait a minute. I have people doing Pio. I have people doing Max 30. I have people doing T25. What do I do with them? That's something you'll have to figure out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be balancing two challenge groups at a time every now and then. Okay, it's going to have to just overlap. But I know that this is going to be huge because no one else is taking advantage. Not many other people are taking advantage of this launch. And we need to because I can help you through it and I can help you coach others through it too. Okay, just from what I've learned. So I've created two things. Uh, well, tomorrow I'm creating our challenge group, our Beauty and the Beast challenge group that I want you to commit to. If you've already done the fix and fix extreme, I think you should do the body beast. You should. If you've done the fix, but not the extreme, then you need to do extreme. I mean, it's just like, it's a no brainer. Um, and if it scares you, then that means you should do it. If it scares you, it means you should do it. And if you're finishing your program now, finish your program and then join us for the next one. Okay. Like you don't have to join me right this second. Um, but the thing that I just posted to all of our pages, all of our groups is an invitation to join the coaches of Beauty and the Beast. So I kind of created a little group, I know another group, where the coaches who are creating these challenge groups can join and share best practices. Plus, I have incredible amounts of resources from the test group of sample invites and posts and all these resources on Autumn and Sagi and Body Beast and Hammer and Chisel. And I don't want to inundate our whole team with them because they may not care. Um, and I only want to give them to the people that are really going to use them the right way. So I made this group just for coaches who are going to coach these types of challenge groups so they can have all the resources they want so they can ask questions. Okay, so that's there. Number two um, is that on our personally sponsored coach phase, I just posted an invitation to October the 2nd, Friday, October the 2nd. We're having a personally sponsored team gathering, just like a party, and it's going to be at Ryan Shuey's house. Thank you, Ryan. And um, it is a private event. And I copy and paste the link and it, you're not able to see it unless, until I personally invite you. So I will personally invite you later. So just know that you should see that event popping up tonight or tomorrow. Okay. So I hope you can make that. Um, let's see, whatever, what else next week we have a fit fighter nation hangout on Tuesday and Ryan is actually going to lead that for us. And that's a team hangout. So it's the whole team, um, joining together and she's going to talk to us about goal setting in over the course of 90 days. It's the Shaleen Johnson type of training and it's fantastic. And we have 90 days kind of left in this year, you know, planning for the third quarter. So it's fantastic. It'll be amazing. And it's exactly what we need. So make sure you tune in next week for that. Um, let's see, let's see what's coming up next. Um, our open house is going to be a five day open house, the 23rd through the 27th. I'm going to ask some of you guys to help me lead that. And um, our next business opportunity presentation is on September 24th. And I'll probably ask like two or three of you to help me with that. Um, but I think that's it coming up so far. We have um, Ryan Shuey and Michelle Clark leading our Push to Emerald group. And I'm really excited about that. The engagement is amazing. I have a group of you guys that I'm working with to push to diamond. And I'm really proud of the work that you're doing. Um, 
Kimberly Morrison and Laura Collier are new success starters. You know, Beth Glazier is a new Emerald coach. There's just a lot of great things going on. Yes, congratulations. And so it's just, there's a lot of great things going on. On Thursday, if all goes well, um, which it should, we'll be a 10 star diamond team. Like that is off the hook crazy because last year at this time, I was a one star diamond coach. I had Erica as my only star diamond. And now you guys are just stepping up like none other. It's just really, really exciting. There's just so many things going on. And this team is just growing like crazy and it's really fun. I think we're almost at a thousand coaches on this team. In fact, we might be, I didn't check the numbers today. So it's really incredible. Um, okay, so let's get this party started. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me and then I'm gonna share with you three ways that you can get out of your own way starting right now so that you can succeed in this business however you want. Um, so I shared this at the, um, what was that, the Jeff Hill training, okay, that we just had. And I just wanted to let you guys know a few things about me. That when I started working this business, I never intended to. You know, I started working this business in, let's see, June of 2012. I think that sounds right. I had three people in my first challenge group and only one person bought a challenge pack. Um, one person bought Shakeology Home Direct and the other person already had Turbo Fire that someone gave them. So I didn't hit SC5 my first month in the business or anything like that. In fact, there were many months where I didn't even hit Success Club because I just didn't have anyone encouraging me or sharing with me what that really meant. So I was literally just trying to pay it forward and trying to help other people. That was my only goal. I was kind of interested in getting Shakeology covered because my husband was a total downer about how much that costed. Okay. He like totally thought it was too much money, thought I was drinking the Kool-Aid, was a total skeptic. I was even a skeptic. I canceled my Shakeology the day it came in the mail. And I even called Coach Relations to cancel my coaching because I thought there was like red tape everywhere and like somebody was trying to get me. And, um, but for some reason, the guy asked me so many questions. I was like so annoyed. I just hung up and thought I would just deal with it later. Um, so thankfully, the guy, the Coach Relations guy was kind of giving me a hard time. Plus, you can't cancel over the phone anyway. Um, and then I just started working my business slowly. I mean, I was teaching full time. I um, met my husband teaching. So like David and I, our life revolved. Like we, we started our lives at Hamilton Southeastern High School. We got married working there. We had babies, you know, like we grew up there. I grew up there. So I never intended to leave. You know, I was happy. I thought I had what some people call like a dream teaching job. And, um, and I had great students. I was teaching honors classes. I was teaching a class that I like helped write the curriculum for. Like it was great stuff. I was good at what I was doing. Um, but you know, the time comes when you're a mom and your, your goals change, at least they did for me. And, um, it was two years ago when I was, you, um, school started in our neighborhood and, you know, some of you've heard this, but school started in our neighborhood, but HSE started two weeks later than Noblesville. And I, we watched the school bus come and Tyler and Avery were in Tyler's Gator and we were just, you know, watching the school bus. And I took this picture of them sitting in the gator and watching our neighbor friends get on the bus. And that's the moment it hit me that I wasn't going to be the mom that could put Tyler on the school bus. And um, that's when a dream started deep within me. And I never said anything about it. I never said a word about it because in the back of my mind, I was just kind of like, what if? Wow. I knew I had an opportunity in front of me that could help me do that, but I did not believe that I could do it because I was a diamond coach who lost her diamond four times. Okay. I like diamond, not diamond, diamond, not diamond, active, inactive. Like I could, I was like shaky, constantly a shaky diamond. Um, I couldn't keep my coaches active. I had people canceling their psychology, you know, like things were just like not smooth sailing. Um, David didn't understand me working this business. You know, I think he thought it made him feel a little inadequate as my husband if I was trying to earn money for myself to do extra things for myself and my family. Um, you know, the time that we once spent together, like just chilling on the couch, watching bad TV, you know, I'm working my business or always on Facebook. Like it was just not, it didn't make a lot of sense, you know, to our family. And so it was hard. And, um, but then I had that moment and that's when the fire started burning, but I kept it to myself for a long time and I kept myself from succeeding for a long time. I held it back. I didn't want to get too far involved. I didn't know what I was doing. I wanted to quit 
was like, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? But it felt so good and it felt so right. Um, and, um, it was something that was filling a part of my life that was missing a void. I've always loved health and fitness. And, um, you know, I was always an athlete in high school. I wrote, I, was on a cycling team in college and I did triathlons after I graduated from college and worked out at Lifetime Fitness all the time. Um, but then I had met David, and, you know, we just, we didn't work out together. It wasn't part of what we did together and, um, you know, had babies and that whole thing. And, and I didn't have fitness in my life at all anymore. And it was missing and I was unhappy and, you know, like a lot of you guys, you know, so, um, and I obviously found a passion with health and fitness, but also paying it forward. And there was so much appreciation and there, it was so fulfilling and it was bringing in an extra income. And, um, but I'll never forget the night that, um, I told David my dream. I shared my dream out loud with him and I said, I don't want to go back to work. I want, I want to be the mom that I, I feel like I need to be. And it wasn't pretty, you know, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. There were tears and confusion and, and there was, that happened many times. Um, but I learned that I should have shared with him sooner why I was doing this, you know, that this wasn't a selfish act. This wasn't something that I was doing just for me or because he, there was a void that he wasn't filling. You know, I wish I would have said something sooner and shared my dream out loud with him because I wasn't giving myself permission to have this dream is really what it boils down to. I was allowing, and this is my tip number one for getting out of your own way, is to give yourself permission to have your big dream. Um, I was allowing the expectations that others had put on me my entire life to cloud my dream. You know, I was a teacher. I had a college degree that my parents paid for. I got my master's degree in school counseling. I was married to someone that I taught right across the hall from and his family were teachers. And what if, what do they think? Da, 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 da. Those are other people's expectations of me. That's not what I wanted. I should be allowed to say, this is what I want and that's okay. You know, and it's taken me a very long time and it took me a really long time to say, this is okay for me to have this dream because I'm going to make a smart decision. You know, I'm not going to just leave my family high and dry and quit a job and not make enough money to compensate that income and not be able to pay bills. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take a leap of faith when it comes to my family. You know, I'm not going to do that. This was not a leap of faith decision whatsoever. It was a very smart business decision when I retired from my teaching job. And so but it only happened when I gave myself permission to dream and I got out of my own way. I said, what is it that I want? And I said it out loud and I started sharing it out loud. And in the day that I wouldn't say in, in, I think David always like believed in me, but it was scary. You know, it's kind of scary to be like, that's a lot of security and there's a lot of questions that need to be answered and things like that. But it, there was a point where it was a no brainer. When this team got big enough that my team cycle bonus, which a lot of you know what that means, compensated for my teaching income, it was a no-brainer, you know? And so I hope that the day comes when you can make that decision and it's a no-brainer. You know, I hope that day comes and you're like, yeah, this is exactly what has to happen. I mean, there, when I finished the school year, I was like, I can't imagine doing this again. It was really hard to build this team and to build my business and to support you guys the way that you needed to and work full time. It was crazy, but it was so worth it and it was so doable. And so tip number two is to whatever you do, quit looking back, like quit looking in the rear view mirror. Um, because in order to move forward and to give yourself permission to dream and to embrace your dream moving forward, you have to stop looking back. And that does include other people's expectations, but it involves who you used to be. You were someone else before you were a coach on this team. And now Aren't you a better person? Aren't you more positive? And you do have dreams and you like read personal development. You know, I always make fun of myself that I still haven't read those silly gray books. What are they even called? I can't even remember. Okay. Those like sex books, right? Okay. Like I'm like, I haven't even read those because all I read is personal development, you know? And I love it. Like I love cheesy quotes and inspirational quotes. Like I love that kind of stuff, but stop looking at the rear view mirror and, and thinking about, well, that's because that's who you used to be. And that's, 
you know, like I used to be mediocre. Fifty Shades of Grey. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I knew Dana. I can count on you for that one, girl. I, you know, like I was mediocre. I was never the best at anything. Like I was literally like I was the number one singles player on my high school um, tennis team that always got beat. Okay. And I was on the basketball team and I was always the sixth man on the bench. The man that year was supposed to be the starting forward. Freshman came in and beat me out of my spot. So like, I've just always been average. You know, my dad always used to say someday we'll get to do this and someday we'll get to do that. That's mediocre. That's settling for mediocrity. And I was doing that, you know? And so I, because I was constantly looking at what used to be me and now I have to look ahead. We have to look ahead and you have to be like, I'm a beach body coach and I have these amazing opportunities and I have a pretty flipping amazing team. And you know, there's this company and they like give me free stuff all the time. And like, I got a free ticket to summit or whatever. And they just want me to help other people. And they're going to pay me to do that. Like, this is incredible, you know, and I'm this person who has self-control and self-discipline and I can work out and I inspire people. Like you need to start focusing on what, who you are now and who you are becoming and look ahead because we have to stop looking behind because that's when the doubt creeps in. It's like every time I look in the mirror, I still focus on like the parts of my body that I've been focusing on my entire life and like cringing. Like we have to stop that. Like we have to just keep moving forward and looking forward because we will not be able to embrace our dream big or dig deeper, our fire within us goals if we keep looking behind us. So please know that. And then the third thing to get out of our own way is just to be brave and put ourselves out there. I mean, and we know that, and I've said that to you over and over. So you have the dream big, you are the coach, the positive coach, the successful coach, the coach who's doing great things and believes awesome things, but you have to put yourself out there if you want your dream big goal to come true. And you have to do it without caring whatever, like you cannot care what people think. You cannot care what people think. I've lost friends because of being a coach. And I don't have close relationships with people from my past because we're going in different directions. And I have naysayers in my life. I have people that roll their eyes. I have a grandma <clears throat> that every time she talks to Megan, Megan Harrell is my cousin. She's like, did Erin really quit her job? I'm like, no, I retired. You know, I mean, it's just like they, people, some people are just never going to get it. And that's okay. My dad still does not drink Shakeology for crying out loud. Okay. So like everybody else does, but he doesn't, it's just, it's okay. Like some people just aren't going to get it, you know, and that's okay. But we still have to be brave and be bold and put ourselves out there without caring what anyone else thinks. And when I say brave, be brave and be bold, I mean, be authentically brave and bold. And we're going to talk so much about being authentic and being yourself um, at our training this weekend, our SOAR training this weekend. Um, but that's really, I mean, that's how I got out of my own way and how I kind of let this happen. I do the same things that you do. I lead a challenge group every month. I lead free groups. I send invitations. I do follow-ups. I read my PD. I commit to my program. I do the exact same things that you do, but I've gotten out of my own way to allow success to happen. And that takes time and it takes lots of failures. You know, um, it takes a lot of failures. I got to Emerald quickly and I got to Diamond somewhat quickly, but I didn't keep it. I wasn't a strong Diamond. You know, I've had people cancel. I've had Diamond coaches quit. You know, I mean, I've, I've had failures. I've, I'm not the best at everything. I'm not a Barbie in the boxes like some other coaches have said. I'm an actual redhead, to be honest, with curly hair. <laughs> you know, so just know that, you know, I mean, that you can do this no matter what. The biggest thing is that you just have to let yourself have the dream and it's okay. Like never apologize for dreaming big. And you don't have to settle for mediocrity. And I've seen some amazing things happen in coaches' lives. And I don't just mean financially. I just mean personally. Coaches have been able to do some pretty phenomenal things because of the changes that they've made in this life with this business. So. 
that's kind of what, I, that's all she wrote. I mean, how did I do that in under 30 minutes? I'm usually way over time, right? Okay, so um, moving forward, you know, my call to action to you would be to actually write down your dream big goals, write them down. Um, because that's what I was forced to do. Like, I don't know if I went to a training or whatever it was. And it was the theme of Beachbody two years ago was dream big. And I wrote down what, it, what is it? What is that fire within me? And I think once I put it to paper, it became real. It's kind of like every morning I've been doing this, what's called miracle morning. I've invited all of my push to diamond coaches to do that with me. Um, but I'm writing down what's in my head and writing down what's in my head is very, very important for me because it makes it real. Cause I don't, I'm not a talk, like I'm not a, like I'm an emotional person, but I'm not a, like, I don't say everything that's on my mind. It's all up here. I process it. I keep it all in. So for me to write that kind of stuff down, it's a big deal. It makes it real. So I encourage you to write it down. Like no matter how crazy it sounds, like no matter how crazy it sounds, because you deserve to have the dream. Like you deserve that. You deserve to, like I deserved to be able to say, like, cause now you're like, well, duh, cause you made it happen. But two years ago, me saying, I want to stay home. I don't want to teach anymore. Like, that was kind of crazy sounding because I had no clue how to do that. I had no clue how to do that. And, um, so you, but I let it happen. I let it happen. And I shared it out loud. So you deserve that. So write down your, your dream big somewhere. And then my challenge is to say it out loud to somebody, like whether it's me or, you know, some of you have shared yours with me or whether it's your spouse or support system and just say, I just want to tell you this because this is a dream I have and this would be awesome, you know, and it would be, and it can happen when you get out of your own way. Okay. So I wanted to tell you this, I mentioned the miracle morning and then I'm going to check our chat box. So if you have any questions, you can throw them there. So the miracle morning is a book. It's a like self-help. I know we're like self-help. Oh, you're like that person, right? Um, by Hal Elrod, H-A-L-E-L-R-O-D. He's not a fantastic writer or anything like that, but his method of focusing and getting your day started right is genius. And to be honest, it is a lot of what I was doing over the last two years. A lot of people say, how did you do all of this? And I'm like, I don't know. I just made it happen. Well, I was pretty much doing a miracle morning on my own. Um, and a miracle morning is basically your, um, I'm, I would rec, I honestly have been listening to it on audible. I listen to my, most of my books on audible.com. They're like a partnered with Amazon, but I would almost recommend Jen, I think has, no, you have it on your Kindle. I would almost rather see it in writing though, because there's a lot of lists and things I'd like to go back to. Like I'm going back and listening and writing things down. I would almost have to want to have a book with me. Um, I don't know, Jen, what do you think? Do you like having the pages to flip through? I can't. Um, yes. Yeah. So I would prefer the pages to flip through because I'm an English teacher and I like to annotate on the pages, Me too. <laughs> but I can annotate with the Kindle. So that's what I've been doing. So okay. it was just, sometimes it's quick and easy with the Kindle. Yeah. So. yeah. It's one book that I would like to have. And, and I probably will still order it so that I have it because there's all kinds of suggestions and lists. And I'm like finding myself trying to find a section that I'm listening to. But anyway, long story short, it's a morning ritual. It's like teaching yourself a morning ritual that will help you focus and take care of you before the craziness of the day ensues. And the things that I'm doing, which might sound crazy, but it is like, I mean, Meg Wazinski is one of my success partners and she does this every day. She is so cool. Like if she's going to do it, I'm going to do it. So I think you should do it too. But, um, so basically I'm getting up every day and doing a little bit of meditating and some people like to like do daily devotions that way. I'm um, practicing positive affirmations to myself. I'm reading my PD, I'm doing some visualization, like visualizing my goals and the way I want my life to be and the way that I see myself. I'm journaling the thoughts and things that are in my head and I'm working out. So that's kind of part of the miracle morning. And he has all these strategies and ways to get it done in an hour or less. 
And it's just really cool. And it, like I said, I mean, I always say it sounds kind of hokey, like I'm meditating. I'm really bad at that. I'm hoping to get better because I can't, I have trouble shutting down. But also like when I get up in the morning to meditate, like I'm kind of tired. So it's hard for me. So I'm trying, I'm working on it. Um, but it's really amazing. I've done this for two days in a row and, and I actually have gotten up excited to do this because I'm like, this is just for me and I know what I'm going to do and I know it's going to make me feel good, whatever. Um, I recommend listening to Louise Hayes affirmations, L-O-U-I-S-E-H-A-Y. This was Laura Verbich. She's like one of our favorites. Um, Laura Verbich recommended Louise Hay. If you just YouTube Louise Hay affirmations and just push play on a YouTube um, video and listen to it for five or 10 minutes, she's going to like it, give you this big hug. It like just feels awesome. So I recommend doing that if you're not sure what to say to yourself when you're trying to give yourself positive affirmations. Some people are like, I am awesome. I'm an amazing coach. I can do this. And I'm like, I can't, I have trouble with that. I need someone else to tell me what to say right now. So Louise is helping me through affirmations. So anyway, okay. So I'm going to check our chat box here and see what's going on. Um, 50 shades of gray. Okay. Good, good contribution, Dana. Okay. <laughs> she's like, I got this one and she's doing homework and your son's like, Oh my gosh, she said your name. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Um, oh, Michelle, thanks for sharing. You make me cry. The fire has been lit. I know girl. I know. Um, starting your miracle morning tomorrow, Jen. I know. Aren't you excited about it? Like, it's actually kind of fun. David was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to go meditate. <laughs> Well, I'll get better at it. Has getting certified and instructing, Dana's asking, live fitness classes helped your business? Um, yes, but not as much as you would think. Like it has helped me be more confident and help me focus on my fitness goals more. It has helped me meet new people. I think it has helped my credibility and it helps me like feel more comfortable and confident answering questions and helping people in my challenge groups. Um, my problem though is that I teach in the Fisher at the Fisheries YMCA here and it, we're very saturated with beach body coaches at the Fisheries YMCA. So most people I meet, they're like either already a coach or working with a coach or they want to work with me and they already have a coach and it gets awkward. So, you know, so I have met some new people and have new clients from teaching group fitness. Now, if I were to go out on my own and do something cool with that, that would probably get me a lot more business, but I'm just, I don't have all that in me yet. I highly recommend getting certified no matter what though. Like Dana needs to be insanity certified like none other right now. Um, because it's just an amazing experience. Like certifications are incredible and they are so fun and they do help your confidence and I think your credibility. Um, let's see, Jen, he is so flipping young. I can't believe it. Pretty cool. Who, how Elrod? Yeah, he's, a, he's an amazing person. Um, hardback or, or audio. I think we answered that. Oh, Lori, your stories gave me excited. Thank you. You're so welcome. And then Katie, I just ordered the book. Okay, good. All right. So, um, Anything else? Anybody have any questions for the good of the order before we close shop tonight? I'm going to stop the recording.